You're watching Byline Wilmington on CBS 10 WILM. Here's your host, Don Ansel. Okay, uh, we're back with Paul Knight. He's uh, running for mayor of Wilmington, says he's going to be elected in, uh, in the uh, November election. Uh, I wanted to give you an opportunity to finish. I kind of well, we were stopped. You, you asked me. Um, you asked me how would I reduce the spending? Yeah. And uh, first of all, you'd have to look at all the non-critical uh, uh, employee positions. You've been in business. I'm in business. But that's right. And this is the common what, sense what, that you have to look at. I, there's you, uh, the budget's uh, uh, public. Uh, where no, would you the cut? the summary is public. Where would you cut? The summary is public. Where would you cut? And to to actually see where the where the cutting would have to happen, I would have to have the line by line or line by line itemized budget to see where the pennies, all the way from the pennies to the dollars, are spent. The only thing online with the city right now is the summary budget. And that's not enough detail to make those decisions. But I can tell you that those are the tough decisions that a mayor and council have to make in tough economic times, not trying to decide where to get money to finish uh, the bike path or where to get money to build another park. We've got 36, 37, 38 parks inside the city limits of Wilmington. You know, why spend $4 million on a piece of land to build another Let's park? Let's talk about forced annexation. All right. It's a big issue in your campaign. Yes. Um, do you think it's a viable tool for keeping cities healthy? I believe a lot of people would like to think that. Do uh, you? I don't believe. In short, it is a way for a city to generate more tax income to the city. Right, but it goes ask, against, but let me preface that it goes against my belief that government should not be trying to find ways to grow their budget and find more income. They should be able to manage the budget and, and well, not let me ask have you to this. go out searching for every penny. How do cities die? with stagnant population, if, if you're not growing the population, uh, keep taxes and the cost of services down? Because those are increasing. Because at all some the time. point, when a city, a city reaches a critical mass, and depending on the county it's in, it then needs to think about consolidation. All I can talk about is Wilmington and New Hanover County. Do you favor I am consolidation very of pro, city and county government? I am pro-consolidation. If you'll give me one second to, to tell you why. Right now, if you live in the city, you pay about 79, 80 cents on every hundred in taxes. That's city county tax. You live in the county, you pay about 51 cents on the hundred county tax. Now, the city council has already said we are going to annex all the way out. So if you live in the county, you're going to have a tax increase and it's going to go up for you. If you live in the city, you're already paying too high of a tax. So we consolidate, we find the efficiencies, and we have a tax rate that sits somewhere between 55, 65 cents on the 100. And everybody turns out better. The county citizens and the city citizens turn out better. And we consolidate this government in an efficient manner without putting mandates on the consolidation like they like the city council and the county commissioners did with the public utility authority where they mandated them out of efficiency you what you, were the mandates that uh, made it inefficient the public utility authority uh, they say this is county commissioners and city council you can't fire anybody you must merge the two bodies together without cutting back on personnel Whoever is being paid the most, you must bring it with the most benefits, meaning salary and benefits, you must bring everyone up to that like amount. And so you already crippled the efficiency factor there. Of course, there. our water bills are on the low end of all cities of our size in the state. Well, should we, is that a bad thing? No, but I mean, it doesn't but sound But government, no. I watched the presentation. The government seems to think, well, since we're on the low side, let's raise it up to where we need to be in the same running with the higher level cities. They do that with taxes. They do that with the, with the water bill. I've watched the presentations. This is not rumors I'm talking about. Do you oppose the city spending for uh, historic renovation projects of city buildings like Thalian Hall and the historic USO building? I oppose the spending when times are down. I oppose the spending when it says, oh, we can do this, but it's going to increase the budget, and next year we're going to have to raise the taxes on the citizens. It gets back to the way a business is run. You don't, 
expand the business in an economically down time. Well, the historic USO building was... And that's was, where the common sense is missing. The historic USO building wasn't uh, renovated in a, in a bad economic time. Would you have opposed if that? If times are good and I don't have to raise taxes... Would you have supported renovating that building? I would support renovating that building if times were good and it was no additional burden to the citizens. Um, how, what, what's your assessment of the current city tax rate? Is it too high? Is it, is it where it needs to be? I believe that it's not too high, but at the same time, the mindset, is, at least my mindset, is to find ways to bring it down. That is my whole effort, is to always look for ways to reduce the tax All right, rate. Another big issue in your campaign is the new convention center. That's under construction. Uh, do you think there's going to be any benefits to the city? Don, I've researched this, this topic quite a bit, and I'm going to tell you that in today's world, the convention center will be a burden to the citizens. Now, I watched Deborah Mack show at the uh, presentation just this, the other day uh, how we're going to be cash flow positive. These are made on assumptions. I've heard the mayor, uh, Bill Sappho, I've heard him say, well, it's just like the beach renourishment. You know, we keep putting dollars into pumping sand on the beach. Well, you know what? The beach has a market, a viable market that people want to be at and use and spend money nearby. The convention center market is dying. The people that are managing the convention center said themselves in this presentation, the outlook looks bleak for the next several years. If you're elected, would you stop construction? No. And let me tell you why. Uh, I believe that we need to go ahead and get it open, get it running, get it operating. The, the, the question of do we need a convention center or not has passed. Right. You know, the, the, admin the current administration and the previous administrations have already put us into this position through their bad judgment. Now, there's talk about th selling it. Would you do that? We get it open. We try to operate it, get it operational for two years. At the end of two years, we see where the finances are at. If it's a thriving business and I'm wrong, hey, we go forward. If it's not, we try to get it off our back. We don't try. We get it off our backs and find a private investor who can do whatever they want to do. We're going to leave it there and we'll come back and talk more with Paul Knight. Stay with us.